What's up guys? So if you clicked on this link, you're at least a little bit curious about the show Baskets. And if you don't have a few minutes to spend with me while I tell you why I think you should watch it, I'll give you the Spark Notes version. Here's four reasons you should watch the show. Season 1, Season 2, Season 3, and Season 4. Now if you stick around a little longer, I'll tell you four real reasons that I think you should watch the show. Now this was a show that ran from 2016 to 2019. Now I admit I did see some ads for it back in the day, but I never checked it out. In fact, I didn't pay attention to the show until this year, 2021. It was brought to my attention by my lovely girlfriend, seen here eating Taco Bell. She told me that she used to kind of watch it in the background, never really paid a lot of attention to it, but she thought that it was worth checking out. So we sat down and we watched it and we were blown away. The show was created, written, and partially directed by Zach Galifianakis, Louis C.K., and Jonathan Kreisel. Now, Jonathan is probably the one person on that list that you don't recognize, but I'm willing to bet you know some of his other works. He's worked with Tim and Eric. He worked on Check It Out with Dr. Steve Brule. He's worked on Portlandia, SNL, The Kroll Show, and others. Now the show is brilliant, it's well written, it's well acted, it's a great plot, great soundtrack, there's so much to love about it. And unfortunately, I think at this point we all know what Louis C.K. did that got him cancelled, and unfortunately the overshadowing effect that that had on anything that he was tied to as far as a creator, producer, or star. If you have strong feelings about what he did, I completely understand. I have my own feelings as well. I'm not going to put my editorial about that into this because I want to focus on the show Baskets. A lot of people worked really hard on that show from top to bottom, and I think they did a fantastic job, regardless of the personal life and problems that Louis C.K. had. So if you can look past that with me, I want you to go on a little journey and we'll explore some of the reasons I think you should check out Baskets. Now before we get too far into it, I do have one caveat for viewers. If you hear the name Zach Galifianakis and you go into watching this show thinking it's just going to be a laugh riot, you're not going to have a good time. So I want to set the expectation for you right now. Zach Galifianakis touches on a more human aspect than many of his other famous works but that doesn't mean it's a bad performance in fact i think it means it's an excellent performance and that brings us to our first reason out of four that i think you should give baskets a try so he came onto the scene as kind of a loud erratic force of comedic timing and delivery you probably know him from his early stand-up comedy or his roles in movies like the hangover masterminds, shows like Between Two Ferns, or even Tim and Eric's Billion Dollar Movie if you're into that kind of thing. Personally, I have found much more joy when he plays a role where he is able to access a little bit more of the human element and not so much the goofy, silly comedy. This is why I think he is brilliant in Baskets. From the first moment we see him on the screen, his body language says everything. I could immediately identify with his character because I still remember the days where I was working long hours, I never seemed to have any money, and I definitely never had energy for anything. I assume he probably had days like that early in his comedy career, and he pipes that directly into the character of Chip Baskets, the struggling clown. The brilliance doesn't stop there, though. He also plays the role of his twin brother, Dale Baskets who is seemingly a more successful mirror of his own self. The best thing I can say about this point is that each character is fun to watch individually in their own scenes, but there are numerous scenes where both characters are together, and knowing that he had to act in both roles as two different people and have it play well on screen is extremely impressive to me, and I think it somehow makes those scenes greater than the sum of its parts. There's pretty much an endless number of ways you can tell any story. So for me, a TV show that's able to find a successful combination of pacing, character building, 
and reveal is huge. This is something that I think Baskets does perfectly. Perfectly. I, in fact, I've drawn inspiration from my own writing based on the way that this show was structured. Specifically, one of my favorite aspects about the structure of the show is that there's a entire backstory of Chip Baskets when he was in France learning to be a clown, but they don't just start with that. They don't just start with the backstory. They actually take bits and pieces of the backstory and weave it into episodes based on where that backstory is applicable to something we're seeing today. Visually, it's extremely effective. And as a narrative piece, it helps keep us interested in the scenes because as each scene goes on, we learn a little bit more about the character that we would not have figured out in a natural way otherwise. This show is a bit experimental. The director, Jonathan Kreisel, called it a slapstick drama, which kind of is right in a weird way. Now, kind of similar to plot and structure is something I call the tightrope of dramedies. Any good comedy has enough drama to, to kind of tug at the heartstrings. And any good drama, in my opinion, has just a little breath of comedy breathed into it that allows us to relieve some of the tension and relax a little bit. It's a kind of a grounding effect, I think. When writers decide that they're going to make a series that they classify as a dramedy, they are tasking themselves with something extremely difficult. They are telling us before we even watch the show that they are attempting to balance comedy and drama in a way that makes sense. Now what it means to make sense is that as a viewer, we have to be able to watch the show and leave each episode, each scene by saying, that was kind of funny or that was kind of serious and that makes sense. It's not easy to do and I think Baskets has done it extremely well. They have kind of a yin and yang between some of the characters where for every serious moment with a character, there's maybe a character in that scene who just brings it down a little bit with a comedic moment. You know, some of the toughest scenes to watch in Baskets, uh, there are several that are coming to mind right now that literally had me in tears. Uh, they were bookended with comedy. The scene ended with comedy, and the scene before that was funny as well. And it wasn't necessarily the most outlandish comedy, but it was fitting comedy that then led us into a dramatic moment. And that's one of the most beautiful, brilliant things about Baskets, because it feels like real life. Even if something kind of silly and outlandish happens, we get thrust into a serious moment and then thrust right back out of it, just like real life. Think about if something crappy happened to you when you were going to work and it, it kind of just ruined your day and you were really beating yourself up about it. But by the weekend, when you were out for drinks with your friends, it just became a funny story for you to tell. That story that made you so upset in that moment became this, this bonding sense of relief for everyone around you because they could probably relate to it. They saw that you were okay even after it happened and you were, you were just having a good time together. That is something that I think this show brings to the table in a big way is it's able to get us into our head about our own lives while we relate to the characters that are experiencing their own fictional lives and we're laughing along the way. So I think that the tightrope of dramedies is a great segue into my final reason why I think you should watch the show. And this is my favorite reason. I did make you wait till the end. And if you've made it this far through the list and you're not sold so far, congratulations on your ability to follow through. However, hear me now. If you can watch just three episodes of the show, that's like 90 minutes of your time. If you can watch three episodes and not fall in love with Christine Baskets, Turn it off, find something else to watch, because it's not going to be the show for you. But like most critics have said, like most people have said online, and like I experienced myself, you are going to be captivated by the character of Christine Baskets, which is Zach Galifianakis' character's mother, played by Louis Anderson.
Louis Anderson went deep inside to channel his own mother, and he delivers a show-stopping performance. I don't think of it as me, a man playing a woman. I think of me playing a woman, me being a woman in the part, me embracing the, and leaving Louis Anderson behind. And you know, I have that thing in my family with 11 kids, five sisters and my mom especially. There is a wonder of life for my mom and for Christine. My mom could find the nuance of anything. Like, oh, smart water, oh. Wow, that seems like a good idea. I wonder if I should drink it, I hate to get any smarter. You know, she was that kind of person who would think, you know, what a beautiful frame that picture's in. You know, she found all the beautiful things. You're wearing it. I love you in pink, Louis. Louis, that, that's the thing to do. Always with a compliment when she met people, she found all the good things about them first. It can be a tricky thing to have a man play a woman in a show. Uh, can a man really capture the essence of what a woman character would be going through without ha having never lived as a woman? It's a tough question. I leave it up to the scholars to discuss because I cannot certainly answer that. But I will say that when I watched Louis Anderson on screen playing Christine Baskets, I saw a woman who reminded me of my mother. I didn't see a man playing a woman written down on a piece of paper. I was completely drawn in and blown away. And like I said, if Christine doesn't do it for you after three episodes, don't bother. It's not for you. But I think if you give it a chance, it'll just be one of the many things that you fall in love with. All right, so what really is Baskets? It's not as funny as The Office. It's not as serious as Succession but it is a little bit of both. It has the family dynamic that is explored in succession, but it's a little more funny than that. And it has the, the elements of a, a goofy group comedy of a show like The Office, but it's a little more serious. So where does that land us? Well, it lands us with a show that is about essentially a sad clown. Chip's basically a sad clown. He is a French-trained classic clown, which would be a Pierrot, I believe, in French. That's sort of the sad clown narrative that this show hits perfectly. It hits the note and holds it the whole way through wonderfully. And I want people to check it out. I, I, I got a lot from this Emotionally, mentally, professionally, as far as my writing is concerned, I was able to take some notes about technique from this. I think that there is something for you in the show and I want you to watch. But you don't have to take my word for it. Give it a shot if you want. I'm about to let you watch the trailer to the show so you can, with everything I've told you, you can now take a look and see if it fits the tone that you think you would enjoy. And if you enjoyed the work that I've put into this video, please feel free to drop a like or subscribe. I'm going to be making more content like this in the future, and I hope you check it out. All right. Enjoy the trailer. I'll see you next time. It says here that you studied clowning at the Clown Francais. That's correct, at the Academy uh, de Clown and Francois. You could probably tell that I'm struggling in your class due to the fact that I don't speak French at all. Want me to do something with the handkerchief? I guess you're hired. I am. Care for a cup of coffee before you leave? No, I'm okay. Thank you. understand I don't love you. Maybe you could learn to love me, you know, like when you hear those nice stories about arranged marriages or Stockholm Syndrome. 
think being a clown is the most important thing in the world to be. You look like a clown, but you are not a clown. I am a clown! <laughs> This is where you live? Yep, yeah, it's only permanent. I'm gonna have to get a real job. This is a real job. We all can't be florists or dishwashers. Some of us have to be artists. If it ain't my evil twin brother, Chip, I thought I smelled a ponytail. That's a cute top, are you a real lesbian? No, thank you though. Baskets. Welcome to K Rico, can I take your order? Uh, Tangerine Fanta, please. Um, Tangerine Fanta, please. Uh, we do not have that. Pepsi Lime? Pepsi Lime? No. Okay, Schweppes then, Schweppes. Okay, just a Schweppes then. You're breaking up. Say it one more time. Schweppes. I'm sorry, I heard two people. Schweppes! The Schweppes! Series premiere Thursday, January 21st, only on FX.